Hey, up here, Astro Boy. If you think you can take our top prize spot, you're wrong. Dead wrong. Help me get out of here. I'll help you. With my foot. Wow! Oh, yeah. How you like that, cheetah? Oh, oh, to infinity and my foot! Boom! <laughs> In the vacuum of space, they cannot hear you scream! Oh, oh. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel over here at Broke Boy Media and today we are going to be reviewing Toy Story 4. My name is Christian and I have Devin with me here as always. How are you doing today, buddy? Doing pretty good. How about you? I'm doing pretty good myself, man. It's just, it's been so hot here this weekend. Last night there was like this terrible, terrible tornado warning and thunderstorm warning in our area and I woke up the next day and a bunch of branches that just like falling off trees and whatnot and i felt like like a, lim a mini hurricane came through to be completely honest and i was like Boy. oh wow yeah there was this one air air and bnb like a few houses down from me that those huge tree just like fell on top of this car i felt super bad but other than that i mean today it's it's pride day down in nashville well their pride parade is going on right now i think yeah it still should be going but other than that, man, it's been pretty good. Just uh, chilling, you know. It's the weekend, so got to see two toy tastic movies this week. Yeah, we saw we saw two movies that are both very similar, but also very not similar. It's kind yeah. of weird. <laughs> I was like, oh, Andy and this Andy's toys. I was like, hmm, I feel like they did this on purpose. So yeah, they little... definitely named them Andy and Child's Play on purpose. <laughs> Like, what's your name? Han Solo. Chucky. What? <laughs> but yeah, as we uh, said earlier, we will be reviewing Toy Story 4 uh, for this um, review. And just for to let you guys know, you can also listen to us on Spotify and iTunes. Devin, we made it. We're on there. It's all, it's yeah. all, it's all up there. It's, it's the big time. The big time. Yeah, for all you audio listeners, you can listen to us on those two respective platforms, Spotify and iTunes. And we are also on YouTube and Podbean for you Podbeaners out there. Um, I came out wrong, but <laughs> <laughs> oh God. you Podbean listeners. There we go. Um, yeah, you, you knew what I meant. So anyway, let's, uh, let's read the synopsis here really quick and get on with the non-spoiler section. And then we'll head over to the spoiler section and we'll let you guys know when that is so the synopsis for toy story 4 which i kind of viewed myself as a perfect epilogue uh to the toy story trilogy is when a new toy called forky joins woody and the gang a road trip alongside all the new friends reveals how much the world how big wow how big the world can be for a toy dress directed by josh cooley and we all know the actors, you know, coming in from the previous Toy Story, but we have we have some new faces. We got we got Keanu Reeves as Duke yeah, Kaboom. The Keanu Sans is strong. <laughs> and we also have uh uh Key and Peel playing as the uh the, the two plush plush toys, the the rabbit and the uh Ducky, the Ducky, Ducky and Bunny. Ducky and Bunny. <laughs> Ducky <laughs> They're making another Toy Story. What? <laughs> yeah so th those are just a few to uh you know na name a few from the uh the new oh and also christina hendrix as gabby gabby so um yeah oh my gosh i'm so sorry i'm just like zoning out today what were your initial thoughts about toy story 4 when they first announced it Devin? I, I was kind of on the same page as a lot of other people i was just like uh i'm a little worried about this toy story 3 had a perfect ending and it's just people were kind of worried because it's a beloved franchise and if it's not like perfect like the other ones it could have been a little annoying to end it like that definitely ended up being happy with the result here despite the worries yeah i i knew there was a lot of worries going into this movie and i was, I was kind of confused as to um as to why that is i don't know why but i mean i was all i was on board for it on board for it i cannot talk today I was on board for it since day one. Um, I didn't really know much about the story. I didn't really want to dig too deep and accidentally run into any spoilers. But um, overall, like with the only thing that kind of concerned me was Forky. I wasn't sure how much he was going to grow on me, but he, he ended up, I, I ended up liking him a lot. At first I was like, 
how are they going to play off of this? I was more curious than anything. wasn't really worried, but um, I was, yeah. yeah, I was, I was pretty curious about the type of story they were going to tell. And then, yeah, I never really had any doubts, but still curious, you know? Yeah. I understand the doubts people had just because I think there's a lot of downside if the story and movie aren't as good as the other ones, just because like I said, three seemed like the perfect ending at the time. Yeah, because so everyone was wondering, they're like, oh, you know, like, I mean, Disney's made some stinkers in the years, like, we, we all know that, but, like, Toy Story has just, you know, gotten, has has never had a bad review, neither has this one, it's been sitting at, well, it was at 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, now it's sitting at a 98, I believe, which is still mind-boggling, and, you know, I, I don't think they made this for, you know, nostalgic cash grab sake, but I feel like there was a story to tell, and they told it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but um, did you just want to get into spoilers? I know I said I know I said we're gonna do a non-spoiler section, but <laughs> uh, one thing I'll say that's non-spoilery is that all the new characters they added really helped the story and were really well placed. I think and really helped grow the grow the story and the plot. Yeah, I was gonna say like majority of Andy's like old toys kind of took a back seat this time around, which was kind of nice. Um. I wish we would have seen a little bit more interaction, but this this main story was overall it, it was a story between or about the celebrate. It was to me at least it was about the celebration between the friendship of uh, Woody and Buzz. Overall, that's probably like the best way that I can explain it to someone without going to like super detail. But it mainly focuses on Woody, Buzz, um, I guess Gabby, Gabby. Um, Forky and uh, Bo Peep. So, but yeah, um, let's let's just head into spoilers, I guess, and we'll we'll uh, you know, from here on out, this is spoiler section. So, you have been warned. All right, we're into the spoiler section. So, Duke Kaboom, <laughs> Duke Kaboom, who's the Canuck with all the luck? I am. <laughs> I I really really liked his character, Ke- Keanu's character. It was perfect. Uh, yeah, it really was. Like I, I, I loved his, but I think Key and Peels were just like even better somehow. Even better. Yeah. Hilarious well, the whole time. Well, yeah, I mean they, they play off each other so well that it's like and like literally both of their characters were like attached to the hip. I mean to the paw slash feather, uh wing. Paw yeah. and wing, I guess you could say. Ducky and bunny, sure. Um but I, I really did like how Duke Kaboom had his his backstory was like the best. <laughs> yeah, what was what was his kid's name? It was like something French. Something Jacques. I can't really remember, but I love it how he was actually a Canadian stunt. He, he was he was kind of like evil Knievel, but you yeah, know, like the the Canadian version of that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is this is great. But um, yeah, I really liked how um, to me. Uh, really quick with Gabby Gabby. I, I thought she was honestly like the perfect like quote unquote villain in a way. It made you feel really sympathetic towards her because you you know, she just wanted to be played with in general, you know, to have a an owner, um, if you will. But um her it, uh, I felt very sympathetic towards her. Um she had a simple but moving uh, character arc in my opinion. But I, I ended up liking her. At first I was like, yeah, I really don't like her all that well but i'm like well maybe they don't want me to like her for a certain reason and then i mean i mean it, it was kind of um predictable towards the end when um you know she finally gets woody's uh voice box and that one what was her name oh my god janet was it or i i forgot she she came with like a book in general and there was like a girl's name within the book who shared the same name as someone else from the harmony harmony i think it was yeah who um her grandmother owned owned the store and she you know finally took notice to gabby gabby after she like pulled her string and her grandma's like you can take it if you want and she's like nah (laughs) just throws it in the crate (laughs) i was like oh rejected and then i felt so bad at the same time I was like, oh, wait, no, she's going to get rejected. I'm like, well, maybe she'll become one of Bonnie's new toys. I'm like, no, oh, Bonnie's got enough toys. This is like a lot of the things I was thinking in my head while watching the movie. <laughs> I'm like, this, how many, I'm like, how many toys does one kid need? Yeah, that's a lot of toys. <laughs> that is a lot of toys. 
I was like, there's no way they all end up being her toys. I'm like, and, a, and a very wide variety, too. You usually have, like, <laughs> a theme going. This is just all over the place. Well, yeah, I mean, half of them, or a majority of them, I would say, you know, coming from Andy, he was kind of all over the place with, you know, a cowboy and a space ranger. It was, like, totally two total polar, blah, 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 polar opposites of each other. But, yeah, I, I felt bad for Gabby Gabby, and then I, I felt a little, uh, I was like, you go, Gabby. When she uh, finds the girl towards the end who was lost from her parents. And she's like, are you lost too? I was like, oh, well, that's nice. And she finally finds a police officer. And well, thank God she finally actually talked to someone. Yeah, I didn't have the, the same type of like the swing on um, Gabby Gabby that you did. I think she was still kind of like bad. She did almost rip, rip Woody's voice box out of him without his consent. So. <laughs> Consent! Consent! <laughs> yeah, that is true. That, that and she was also creepy. Like, and she, she just got away with it and without any repercussions. That yeah. wasn't great. That is very true. Like, not gonna lie, I did feel like a little bit of like an Annabelle like vibe there for a second. Oh yeah, definitely. Those those dummy things. Yeah. Like, <laughs> a million of them running around like and they just, weirdly running around. <laughs> it's like they were just running around skipping leg day, but like... Yeah. <laughs> had no like independence whatsoever i was like this place is creepy as creepy as heck man i just i just couldn't do it there were a couple of jump scares for for a kid's movie kind yeah of. <laughs> i'm not... yeah especially when um oh my gosh they're i think they're they're going back towards the carousel i think it was like woody bo peep and uh ducky and bunny and a few and duke of boom and um there there's like the baby carriage with one of <laughs> With one of Gabby Gabby's, um, her henchman or whatever inside of it. And the lady thought there was like an actual baby in there. She flips it over and freaks the heck out. Yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> I kind of felt that face. <laughs> I felt that way. Like when I watched, I think it was like Twilight. Like, I think it was like the third movie part, like one or two. I can't remember. It was on TV one day. And the, the baby that, um, uh, not Kristen Dunst, uh, Kristen Stewart has it's it's completely computer generated. It looks so freaky. It's like really, really unnatural. And I felt that way when I saw that doll inside of the baby carriage. I was like, yeah. <laughs> like thank God they don't make dolls like that anymore. They're just so weird. But with like very, anime, very creative henchmen though. Yeah, very, very creative henchmen. You know, they're kind of just mindless zombies, but, you know, you kind of have to give Gabby Gabby something. I don't know. Who who, who were, like, your favorite additions to the uh, the group? Was it Duke of Boom, Forky, uh, Keen Peel's characters, Ducky, Bunny? It, it was Ducky and Bunny. Everything they said was just, like, <laughs> so funny. Plush I, I love, <laughs> yes, I love all the scenarios that go over his plans and the mission. <laughs> They kept doing the same thing over and over. The one that kept drawing out when like she gets home, brushes her teeth and everything. And the boss is like, so "What?" Funny. He's like, "He's like, he's like, that's a, he's like, that's not gonna work." He's like, "Wait for it, you're ruining it." And then they like tower over her. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just cuts to the back of her house, and you hear a scream. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> It was so great. Like, um, I would have been super curious if, like, they actually did that just to see what would happen because no one still knows, you know, like, these toys, you know, come to life when no one's around. And that would have been really interesting to see if, like, if she really, like, would have actually reacted instead of just having, like, a scenario where they're like, hey, you know what? We haven't really had a scenario to where, you know, we have two, like, inanimate objects, like, actually interacting with like one of the humans in the world but yeah <laughs> that was great oh wow oh my gosh siri that don't be creepy. creepy siri seriously man especially after seeing chucky i'm like uh, yeah. uh, uh, anyway um but yeah honestly overall i think i enjoy this more i think i jo enjoyed this as much as toy story 3 just because like like i said earlier i feel like it was a perfect epilogue to the series and you know, it kind of dealt with Woody not letting go, and they kind of cut back to the very beginning of the movie where, you know, Bo Peep gets sold away, and Andy's sister forgot her name. Uh, Molly, was it? I think? I don't know. But I, I really like that, um, 
that sequence. We're like, oh, you know, let's give you a little bit of backstory as to what happened to Bo Peep and where she is now. And I kind of liked her as like a rogue toy, you know, going out on her own and like the entire yeah, world is, is like her playground. She was kind of like uh, Uma Thurman and um, Matt, the chick from Mad Max, you remember? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's been so long since I've seen Matt Max. She was kind of like that, just like a, a rogue badass, just just going around yeah. doing whatever she wants. And that wants. small little tiny cop she had with her. <laughs> I forgot her name. She was like, she was like reporting for duty. She was like, coming down. <laughs> she like comes down within her own little like house <laughs> and like pops onto her shoulder. I thought that was so funny. I love that where they're driving around in a, a skunk. RC car thingy. <laughs> it's like, why is it a skunk? <laughs> all the grown ups and all the uh, adults just start freaking out. He's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that works. <laughs> yeah, that works. <laughs> well, yeah, it it really was. Um, for me, especially, it was it was a pleasant reminder of how important toys are to kids growing up, even if they are just like temporary distractions. Imagination is important, and uh, you really kind of felt that when when um bonnie made forky overall and you know how she it was her first day of kindergarten or preschool kindergarten i think it was and kindergarten yeah she wasn't making any friends and i was like all right at least go over well she she tried to make friends but everyone was just being a dick to her but i think that was that was one of the most emotional parts of the movie to me yeah she was just like crying on on her own table alone it was like oh yeah i i definitely felt Felt the uh, the feels there for a second. I really did like how, as annoying as Woody can be, as we all know, he's very uptight and very clenched with a lot of things. I was watching an interview that, um, oh my gosh, Tom Hanks was talking about, you know, Woody, how he's always so uptight and wound up, and he's, you know, everything has to be a certain way in order for it to be perfect. And I, I really did like the loyalty that he showed Bonnie, even though, you know, he, you know, he still has loyalty towards Andy who, you know, is off to college, and they don't know what that is, really, unless they watch TV. Um, you know. He reminds me a lot of Captain America. Yeah, yeah, he really does. I mean, he's just always just trying to do the right thing. He And he, he had a want... very similar ending to Captain America's Endgame ending, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they both go off into the sunset and do their thing, separate yeah. <laughs> from, from what their life used to be. I really do agree that um, Woody is just like Captain America. He's always trying to do the right thing. He doesn't trade lives. Um, he's always, you know, leave no toys behind and whatnot. And honestly, I, I would say, well, <laughs> I wouldn't, I don't know if I would say Buzz is like uh, Iron Man in a way. Yeah, I was trying to think of the comparison there, but it doesn't really it, work. Yeah. In, in this movie, at least, Buzz was a giant dumbass for the most part. <laughs> he really was, but like his inner voice was like the best part. <laughs> that, that, that was very funny. That was really clever how they did that. It just, it just kept working over and over again. He was like, he's like, what? He's like, yeah, like I have this voice inside my head. He's like, what is his voice? <laughs> and he's like, my my conscience. <laughs> and Buddy's like, whoa. <laughs> Buzz is just like all over the place in this movie. But yeah, I really did enjoy him in this movie. And I mean, I I kind of wish um, Jesse would have had a little bit more to do. But um, the 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 rest of the gang in general, you know, even though they, like I said, they do take a back seat. They're they're very funny when they are on screen. When they're um, when what is it? The the plush unicorns trying to get the dad to go to jail. I think that might have been the funniest part. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the what was the unicorn's name? I don't even. Know. I can't remember the unicorn's name. I I would definitely I, I would definitely have to go back and watch this movie again. That was so sure. funny though. Because like the dad's that dad's definitely getting arrested. <laughs> they they, <laughs> they just like literally completely dismantle the RV. Jesse puts like a. <laughs> a nail inside of one of the tires and she's like they're not going anywhere for a while if you get my point <laughs> i was mm-hmm. like ah that's a knee slapper <laughs> but honestly like overall i would say that i think it was a perfect ending um i don't think this property should be touched on for a very very long time unless they wanted to do like a disney plus type of streaming show series with you know now that um woody has now become a rogue toy i guess that's just what we're calling them in general um or you know an ownless toy with bo peep and 
uh, Ducky and Bunny and uh, Duke and Boom and the rest of them. I kind of like it how you know they they stayed with the circus to help other um, <laughs> other uh, toys essentially <laughs> get adopted. It was like their own yeah. adoption. <laughs> Even though every single kid kept missing the targets <laughs> on that one game, and they're like, "Oh, congratulations! You win this. You win this." And then the uh, the guy who was like running the whole thing, he's literally just sitting there listening to his music because like he doesn't have to do anything really. And like a lot of those games are kind of like hard and somewhat rigged, so they're like, "Oh, you know, they're they're not gonna get you know win any of these toys." And then like towards the end, he looks up at the board and he's like, "Whoa." <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool, but yeah, I like how they showed kind of their their little game plan at the end there, their adventures going forward. Yeah, man, I I really like I I'm I'm really glad they told the story because it really did tar- tug at the heartstrings there, um, for a little bit, and especially just with um, you know, when we I mean we saw Andy, you know, within the first three Toy Stories. And you know how he grows up and everything like that, but it's it's different with a girl and like from a girl's perspective when it comes to making friends and you know the types of games that she plays and Woody wasn't really getting played with all that much anymore, and you know he just he he felt I guess left out in a way or he needed to be in control the entire time and I kind of like how you know Bo Peep you know she um, how he he looks for Bo Peep inside of the. Uh, inside of the antique store because he sees like the carousel type uh lamp shade that she was on and you know he was he was just very it was sad in a way because like woody doesn't really know how to let go of the past and i think he finally did as soon as he decided not to you know return to bonnie but i like yeah. how he explained to borky that you know how important bonnie is to uh, how important she uh, he is to her you know with just making him because she didn't have a friend in class so she made her own and then later on after the credits she made another <laughs> yeah knifey i don't know i don't know what her name <laughs> she's like trash no you're not trash we're you're you're a toy <laughs> he's like how was i made he's like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> He was like so starstruck. I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I guess they're perfect for each other. Yeah, nice little romance at the end there. <laughs> now I'm glad they did it, like, and you know, like towards like a little like post credit scene, not like, oh, you know, now we're gonna have Forky, you know, make another one where you know she makes an- another, you know, companion for Forky and blah 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 blah. But yeah, sorry to get back to my point. Um, yeah, I really did like the fact that um how would he explain how important Forky is to Bonnie and you know he kept he was so addicted to trash <laughs> the entire time the entire yeah. <laughs> the entire it's, it's, it's warm and, and <laughs> cozy and cozy he was like it's warm he's like yeah I guess but like <laughs> when they couldn't find Forky and then Buzz puts a spoon in Bonnie's hand while she's sleeping <laughs> <laughs> safer than a fork safer than a fork and pretty much the same thing like, <laughs> i thought that was so funny but yeah it was and like i kind of felt bad for woody though because like bonnie didn't really seem to like notice him all that much like yeah even... so that's what made the the ending work out well because he realized he's not needed particularly with true. bonnie yeah he's, they said that how many weeks has it been since he's been played with and you know he kind of just felt useless i wouldn't say unappreciated but kind of just needing a little bit more like a purpose within his toy life if toys lives ever end unless you're a plush toy <laughs> there's so much fluff. Oh, that's what we look like on the inside <laughs> Dude, they they killed it, especially like after they went through all of, like the renditions of like the plush rush, and then they're like, "How are we gonna get this key?" And then she just sits it, just it down, shows up. later I just sits it down part. on their shelf. Yeah, <laughs> they were like, "How hard was it?" He was like, "It was hard, very hard." <laughs> but yeah, man, I I really I just enjoyed it. I I always enjoyed Toy Story. It's it was a big part of my life growing up, and like I said, you know, it's it's. It's perfect. I, I thought it was a perfect. It's, it's so rare for a movie series to to all be this good. Like it really is. 
they're all consistently good. It's looking and, like John Wick is off. gonna do the same thing. Yeah. Because yeah, it is it is very I remember I brought that up with John Wick and we couldn't think of anything, but Toy Story is definitely one of them. Yeah, yeah, Toy Story is definitely one of them. I, I really can't think of any if if there's anyone listening, you know, uh to this recording. Um <laughs> let us know um any like trilogies or just you know franchises that you feel that each movie has gotten better with every single installment so far we've only thought of two which is toy story and john wick i'm sure there's others out there we're just you know having a blank moment right now so i'm not i'm not sure if it's gotten better with every installment i think i might like toy story 3 better just because the the emotional parts were a little more throughout and the um, plot definitely led to more more tears for me in Toy Story 3. Yeah, because they, they kind of put him, you know, in different situations where... I mean, I, I really enjoyed Toy Story 2. That was probably my favorite one. I mean, like, I mean, I like the original, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong, but... um, Yeah, I I really... And Toy Story, Toy Story 2 is definitely my favorite. Um, But, like, I like how in Toy Story 3, they're like, oh, you know, what happens? Like, you know, there's toys in ki- you know inside kids' bedrooms, but what about the toys that are inside of like a daycare or you know and then the ones that kind of get thrown away and it, it shows how these toys can kind of easily get corrupted but they're all looking for the same thing it's kind of like what gabby gabby was saying when um she was like you know uh, when she was talking to woody and she's like can we both agree on something and she said can we both agree that you know always be being there for your kid no matter what is like one of the most noblest things a toy can do and that's that, that's literally what he's character. He's 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 a sheriff. He's he's not he's never gonna give up, never gonna let you down, or desert you. I like how they got um got the song out of the way right right at the beginning. We're not out of the way, but played it at the beginning. Yeah. See, I'm trying because I I guess they like they bought not bought the rights, but bought the rights to use it within the movie itself. Because I can't remember who sings that song. I used to know, but I'm drawing a blank right now. If anyone else knows out there, um, leave a comment, you know, wherever you're listening to this on or YouTube and whatnot, and let us know because I can't figure it out for the life of me whatsoever. But I did enjoy Dooku Boom's final, his, his, his gracious uh, jump. Like, Eyes closed. <laughs> he was like, I'm ready to go. We're going to do this right now. And he was like, wait, what? <laughs> Eyes closed and like it was kind of like an ET moment when he's like crossing over the moon. I was like, oh my gosh, they literally thought of everything in this movie. I thought it was great. Yeah, we also got to talk about how good the movie looked. Like, yeah, it oh looks fantastic, God. dude. Like Bo when, whenever there general. was like set, whenever there was like set pieces or like images of the city, it looked like real a real city and like real cars and stuff. I was like, oh my god, it's like not even a cartoon at this point. It looks so good. Yeah, like especially during the beginning when they're trying to get uh, RC out of the uh, the rain gutter, like that rain just looked so. I was like, "What am I watching right now?" And of course, we went to go see it in Dolby in, in the yes. Dolby Cinema. I'm never going back to another IMAX viewing ever unless unless the movie is completely shot in IMAX, like Avengers Endgame. I'll go, but other than that, I'm staying away from IMAX. It's just the seats. They, they hurt my butt, man. They're, they're just they're not comfortable. They're not as comfortable as Dolby seats, and that's that's where the magic shines. And 4K, or just Dolby Vision and uh, Dolby Atmos, the sound quality is just so much better. But uh, was there anything else you wanted to uh, cover before we uh, close out here? What did you think of the ending? The, the Woody and Buzz little sad goodbye. I, I teared up, man, because it was, I mean, it, it was all so sudden. Like, they didn't draw it out or anything like that, which I really liked. They're like, oh, you know, is Buddy going to leave? I mean, is Woody going to stay? I keep, I keep on combining Buddy, Woody, or actually, no. I'm thinking, wow. That, okay, so this Buzz and this Woody, for whatever reason, I'm combining them together as Buddy. But also, Buddy is a part child's play. of Child's Play. And that's supposed to be our next review. And I'm like, thinking of two different movies at the same time. And I'm like, oh, this is crazy. So I apologize for calling, for shipping Woody and Buzz together as Buddy. But <laughs> but yeah, uh, to answer your question, I, um, I, I teared up a bit. Because like I said, you know, they didn't draw it out. It wasn't like, oh, you know, will Woody stay? Will he go? Like, for a hot second it was, but 
when she when Buzz looks at him, he's like, "She'll be okay." And I'm like, "I'm like, I feel like he's talking about Bonnie. He's not talking about yeah. Bo Peep." And then he's like, "Bonnie will be okay." And he's like, "Oh, are you sure?" Because it's it's part of Woody's character. He's just so he 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 wants to make sure, no matter you know what child he's with, that that they're loved and cared for, and that they're happy, and you know he doesn't like to see them down, um, even though within what inside out with that movie in general, it kind of shows how it is important to have different emotions because those emotions lead to happier moments. You know, you can be feeling sad at one moment and then your entire mood and your entire day can turn around from, you know, a great um, a kind act from someone else. And I feel like that kind of tra um, transcribes into this when it comes to Woody making sure that, you know, his, whoever he is with uh, their owners are always taken care of and, never sad or uh, felt alone that they always have their, at least their toys to depend on. But yeah, it was, it was, it was very sad, man. I, I just, you know, cause it's, it's, it's buzz and Woody. There we go. I didn't say it. Yes. <laughs> it's buddy, <Yeah. laughs> but you know, it's, it's buzz and Woody. And yeah, I mean, even though yeah, buzz was a little downplayed in this movie, he was still very, very funny. Like every single time he was on screen, I was like, Oh boy, what's he gonna do now? But um, yeah, it was, it was sad. I'm kind of glad they didn't make Bo Peep and Woody like kiss because that would have been like a little yeah, weird. I'm like they're toys, but you know they had a very very caring and meaningful hug towards the end. But yeah, I, I, I was I was I was feeling myself, man. Tears were starting to come out a little bit, and I was like, this is perfect. I'm like, I I can't see them making another one, especially after this one, and you know with. Uh, Tom Hanks and um, oh my gosh, Tim Allen. Wow, I'm really blanking on names right now. Um, you know, they they even said towards you know while they were uh, recording for this, how how sad and you know it was it was a very emotional time for them because they're they're essentially saying goodbye to these characters that they play with for they they played you know for so long and yeah. What about you? I really like the ending. Um, I think the um. Just the hug they had between each other, Buzz and Woody, that just portrayed so much emotion. Yeah. Like you're watching two toys hug each other, and it's like, whoa! <laughs> like the shit feels this emotional, right? But it was just like really perfectly ending. They Chucky were... had those uh, <laughs> humans feeling emotional. <laughs> yeah, some kind of different emotion. <laughs> different emotion, different, <laughs> different review. Yeah, I just had to throw that in there. I thought it was funny, but. <laughs> Yeah, man, it really was. Um, yeah, it was, it's a great celebration of Woody and Buzz's friendship overall. But so, score time? Yeah, I think score time. Score time. All right, what would you give this out of 100? Um, I'm thinking about 89. Just like right, right up there, almost 90. I kind of wish there was more Buzz throughout the movie and that he wasn't just <laughs> dumb the entire movie, but... <laughs> It was just so funny. I, he was like so fascinated by this voice inside of what he said. And he's like, do I have a voice? <laughs> the entire time. But yeah, it was great. Um, let's see. My score, my score. I would have to give this a 95 because there's always room for error. 95 out of 100. You know, there's always room for that. Um, mainly for me, I, um, I wish... I mean, I wish, you know, the additional gang would have helped out a little bit more, but it did. Yeah, they were kind of just waiting around in the RV, not doing much. Yeah. They did, they did help, like, make it not function <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Try, the, the Triceratops becoming the, the GPS voice. Oh, turn great. left. Make another left. <laughs> it's like, are you sure? Yes, I said turn left. <laughs> that was great. That was really great. I wish I would have seen uh, Rex freak out a little bit more because like in previous movies, he's like always just been one of those funny guys. And, you know, I, I wish and the reason why I get a 95 out of 100. Also, I wish we would have saw a little bit more banter between Mr. And Mrs. Potato Head. That would have been nice to see. Yeah, they were they were really barely in it. Yeah, I was I was kind of waiting for that to you know happen. But I guess it just. I guess it just didn't, but that's okay. It's nothing. Wrong but yeah, the, the new the new characters coming in definitely helped supplement that. Yeah, they were all so good. <laughs> Especially towards the end with um, Tucky and Bunny when um, <laughs> they, they grow to like the laser, laser, laser eyes. eyes and fire breath. <laughs> 
Duke, what was it? Duke of Boom, he was like, do you really have laser eyes, Bunny? He's like, y- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just so random, dude. I was not expecting that at all. I'm like, what is happening right now? I was like, they're turning into freaking kaiju monsters. <laughs> oh, man. Great, great time. I'll definitely have to go back and see this again because I, I mean, it's still a story and I, I enjoyed that much to where, you know, it's definitely worth the second viewing for me, at least. Um, but yeah, so if there's nothing else, just wanted to say thank you, Devin, uh, for what's coming on. And... I do have one more thing. Oh, oh. I just think, I think I saw an article somewhere saying that the director, his name is Josh Cooley, that he started off as a Pixar intern. I just thought that was really cool. Oh. Starts off as an intern, made his way up to directing a Toy Story movie. Like, that's pretty pretty epic journey there. Started from the bottom, and now he is here. Yeah. Yeah. Directed a great movie. Apparently, Disney was, like, hoping to get more out of, like, the box office opening. I forgot how much. It made, like, 14.5, like, billion, maybe? I can't really remember. I don't, I guess they were just project, projecting more more numbers for this. I mean, it is Toy Story, you know, when and especially when, when there is a new Pixar movie that comes out a new Disney Pixar movie that comes out. It normally does extremely, extremely well, but the weekend is not over yet. So it's only Saturday. And I just saw this Thursday and you saw it yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So there's plenty of time, but there's also plenty of time for the Avengers to be avatar. They're coming back next out weekend. to theaters next weekend. Very, very excited. I will. I mean, I, it's only, you know, post credit, a few other few surprises and a tribute to Stan Lee, but I will gladly go see that movie again just to, for a few more of those extra scenes and to get me more pumped up for Spider-Man Far From Home because oh, even, can't wait. Yeah, even though you know Endgame is supposed to be like the end of Thanos, Phase Three doesn't end until Spider-Man Far From Home. And honestly, if you really think about it, when you have Civil War, um, Spider-Man Homecoming. Infinity War, Endgame, and Far From Home all meshed together very, very neatly. And I'll throw Thor Ragnarok in there as well, because that's very important as to, you know, what Thor and Hulk were doing during the times of events of Civil War. But, like, those, like, five, six movies are very, very important, especially when Infinity War, Endgame, and then Far From Home happening, like, immediately after Endgame. It's a very crucial part to ending phase three but it's it's essentially the the epilogue of phase three in a way so you there's, know, gonna, there's gonna be a lot of twists and turns so definitely gonna see that the tuesday comes out I'm yeah coming out on the tuesday man i thought that was very very interesting i don't know but nonetheless i will go see it for sure i already have my ticket i'm sure you do too i'm pretty sure yep. you do but yeah um yeah <laughs> Thank you for coming on, Devin. And um, as always, for everyone listening at home, you can listen to us on Spot, Spotify, iTunes, Podbean, and YouTube as well. So follow us on any of those platforms because we just want to reach out to you guys. And I just figured, you know, instead of people spend more, t- well, I feel I figure people spend more time, you know, listening to podcasts versus you know going on YouTube and watching. Um, something, but we still have our YouTube up for those uh, for our lovely subscribers over there our lovely 58 subscribers over there, a small channel but a proud one um, but yeah, yeah. so um, we'll see you guys in the next one, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Broke Boy Media, that's Broke underscore boy, spelled B-O-I underscore media, that's like the best way to get in contact with us or just to interact with us overall and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one when we uh, review Chucky. And I think Harlan will be joining us on that one. Uh, it's going to be a few days because I know he's been a busy, busy man. But we will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.